Hey guys, it's Bina, and finally we have them, the patch notes for last Epoch's launch on February 21st. We're gonna go over them, uh, not completely, because I'm not gonna go over every single thing. I've went through these on my stream, and I'm just gonna give you the key takeaways that I actually took from my uh, reading through them on my stream, right? So let's go right into it. I don't wanna waste too much time because there's a lot to cover. And um, I just want to give you like a very, very, very condensed version of what I think are the main key takeaways. Obviously, there will be the link down below if you want to go read them yourself or you're searching for something in specifically. Are the projectiles from Marksman fixed? Well, the answer is yes, detonating arrow fixed. Uh, the projectile won't get eaten by the terrain anymore. And, uh, you know, the chapter two uh, void era, get, you won't get eaten your projectiles by the terrain there either. So, first of all, Faster to do arena, they are increasing the arena scaling, so spend less time, it's gonna be more difficult to do the arena, the endless arena, which is the leaderboard, right? Uh, corruption changes, corruption is gonna scale faster, probably gonna be harder, and so they are removing the echo modifier scaling with increased corruption, and now the actual corruption would be uh, a much more, a much better representation of the actual difficulty of the content that you're dealing. So you have much less of a disparity in between echoes, and so the modifiers of these echoes will only last for two to three echoes instead of like up to six. So it will be it will be much more uh, consistent and constant throughout your progression. So that's a good monolith change there. Uh, tier one dungeons are going to be a little bit easier. So what this means, it's probably going to be a little bit easier to do certain skips for the campaign. If you want to go early kill tier four Jolra to go to chapter nine and unlock your faction, because you will need to go to chapter nine to unlock your faction. So it's either you do the full campaign and you get to chapter nine, or you start monolith early, and then you do a dungeon skip with the temporal sanctum key to get to chapter nine and skip a major portion of the story. Again, I will suggest newer players here do the entire story. They are adding cutscenes to all of the game in between the chapters. They're revamping the story. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, I have not watched them myself. I'm going to keep this for one of my streams at some point when I'm not speedrunning. But um, yeah, so if you're a new player, do the campaign. Enjoy. You're only new once. Now, another thing that will be scaling with corruption is going to be the average level of legendary potential. So your average chance of getting legendary potential will be higher the higher you go into corruption. So you're going to be rewarded for pushing high corruption by getting more drops. Very good stuff. Better loading times. So they are improving the loading time in between the zones, especially the loading times in between when you're joining a town or exiting a town. Those are going to be drastically faster. Bosses are no longer pushable. So remember when if you played Thorn Totem, for example, and you were spamming your, your, your totems in Spriggan form, uh, if you fought Emperor of Corpses in the uh, Reign of Dragon timeline, well... Remember how you pushed him to the side of the arena? It was quite annoying. That won't happen anymore. So bosses are no longer pushable either by your minions or yourself. Uh, the negative mana with a zombie sacrifice build is fixed. So you won't be going to negative mana. Apparently going still positive mana will still make it an excellent build. But we'll have to see with 1.0 what happens there. The Rune Master. Now, Rune Master was excellent with its tankiness with permanent flame ward, with all of its ward from its passive tree, from its skills. Most of these sources have been reduced, uh, to name a few. Uh, Frost Claw ward generation has been reduced. The passive ward generation has been reduced. The Cold Fire Cold uh, invocation has been reduced as well. Twisted Heart of Yulkeros has been reduced as well, how much ward you get from it. And like, there's a lot. No more permanent flame ward, so... Frostwall will now share a cooldown with Flame Ward whenever you pass through it and you get the uh, the Flame Ward. So the Squirrel build has been nerfed. The Herald of the Skiri, um, there was a line of tech that did not work on it, and so it makes it so that the Squirrels are, will deal much less damage. Well, much less. Instead of killing a boss in two seconds, it will take you four seconds. Is that really a nerf? I mean, it's still going to be an absolute beast of a build. So... If you wanted to play Squirrels, still viable, guys, okay? Rune Master as well, don't worry. All the Rune Master builds, still viable, okay? So, of course, uh, there's also... So oh, some other note on Rune Master. Rune Master had a um, elemental elemental penetration bug, which, uh, well, not just Rune Master, but elemental penetration was bugged in the game and was giving seven times as much damage as, as it should. It was giving seven times the value that it was supposed to be giving, and so that is fixed as well. Um, so you will have to actually invest a little bit more into your damage to be able to do damage with Rune Master. Uh, Lightning Swarm Blade, 
got changed a little bit because now we have to use Gathering Storm. You'll have to invest into Gathering Storm's tree to get the damage multiplier. Um, overall, slight nerf to Lightning Swarmblade, but Frostbite Swarmblade buffed, okay? Frostbite Swarmblade, now Gathering Storm has a node inside it that lets you turn it into a cold Storm Bolt, and so that will enable you to freeze even more. Uh, so I can't wait to actually play with this. Mad Alchemist Laddle was nerfed. Maximum amount of ailments now, 8, and the damage, the more damage multiplier it got was reduced. Shadow Daggers, slight nerf. It's gotten, I think, a 24% nerf. Is it still viable? Yes, very, very good. Still my go-to option to speedrun the race, right? To get to 100 as fast as possible. Twisted Heart of Ukelros, we already talked about this. Vengeance was buffed. This is kind of a meme, but we always say nerf Vengeance, nerf Vengeance. Well, Vengeance actually got a small buff today, so <laughs> it was worth mentioning and talking about it a little bit here. Cleaver Solution, LPL, so... Cleaver Solution is that axe that lets you scale your intelligence based on the on your strength. So you have as much intelligence as you have strength. Intelligence scales your ward retention. This enables you to go low life and have a, no, a high amount of ward retention and then get an insane amount of ward. That one was nerfed slightly by giving it a slightly higher effective level for legendary potential. So it's going to be harder to get with 2, 3, 4 LP, for example. Uh, Katana and Chris's Implicits are nerfed. These were the Implicits that were giving you Critical Strike Multiplier. So that is a slight nerf. Acid Flask buff. Uh, Cold Fire Cold Invocation nerf. It gives you less ward, but it will still give you the DR. Flame Rates was nerfed in many ways. Uh, Flame Rate Staff was nerfed, the Aberrant's Call. Um, so now the percentage does not only scale with uh, all minions, right? But it only scale with minion, uh, melee minions. So your flame rates, unless if they are melee, won't benefit from that percentage stat. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that we're getting uh, flat damage affixes for minions that you will be able to put as legendary on the staff. So that might compensate a little bit. Uh, another thing that was nerfed is they have 20% less cast speed. They have less projectile speed as well. So that means that it will have less range because the projectile will go uh, uh, will not go as far as they used to. So less off screening, and they will also get. Um, there was a bug for Mark for Death. It was reducing resistances by uh, 50% instead of 25%. So I'm not sure if that will actually affect the rates, but our rates were applying Mark for Death. So I am assuming that it will nerf them a little bit. So do I still think rates are going to be busted? Yes, they were one of the most busted builds in the entire game. So for sure, they are still going to be very, very strong. Marksman, product tiles, we talked about it. They are fixed. So you're going to have a much better time if you like playing bows. Uh, so for all of you bow enjoyer, good stuff. Perma Flame Ward is gone. We talked about this. Lots of sound effects buffs. Lots of visual buffs. Lots of, okay, I kept the best for the last. Ballista, actual massive 50% more damage buff. They also increased the scaling. They gave it a node for uh, Ballista placement speed. Um, just overall, a win situation for Ballista. Whether you want to play explosive or regular turret style Ballista, very good idea for 1.0, in my opinion. Uh, Judgment Aura getting a slight nerf. So Judgment Aura is that mana stacker paladin, which you uh, cast your Judgment Aura, kind of like the Righteous Fire build of Last Epoch, which you just have an aura around you and you walk through monsters and everything burns. Um, slight nerf to its damage by nerfing the mana stacking node. So those are the biggest takeaway from that I get from this patch, uh, from these patch notes. Again, I am for sure for getting some. The link is going to be down below for you guys to go take a look at what exactly uh, your build you're looking for if you got a nerf or a buff. But I think I've covered a lot of the things that I wanted to talk about here today. If you want to support me, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and comment. I appreciate very much all of you guys that have been subscribing to the channel lately with the release of Last Epoch coming so close February 21st. Uh, I cannot thank you enough. I appreciate all of you guys and I hope to see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.